What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got our first Star Wars Sunday and um, today we are ranking every single Star Wars character's death. That's right, every single one. Probably not every single one, but because there is an entire population of older on that. Just got obliterated, but we move, we move, we move. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. To our first death on the list, Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace. This is a great send-off for the character. It really brings... It, it's, it happens in, first off, one of the best fights in all of cinema and Star Wars. And second, it's just great for the story. It's great for the development of Anakin's fall to the dark side. Because if Qui-Gon trained Anakin, it most likely wouldn't have happened. No, I think this is... This is a great all-round send-off for the character of Qui-Gon Jinn just starting the story of Anakin Skywalker. Next, we have Sam Wessel. It just goes in meh, really, doesn't it? It just happens, really, doesn't it? It just happens. It's nothing great. It's nothing flashy. Next, Smee. Shmee? Shmee? Uh, again, good for Anakin's fall to the dark side. Uh, They kind of did it a bit weird, didn't they? Kind of just shoved it in there. Again, I think that goes in meh. I think it goes above Sam Wessel. It's a bit more important for the overall story of Star Wars. Next, Coleman Trevor, my boy. Coleman Trevor. Yeah, just couldn't care less. <laughs> I just had to put him in it. I had to put him in it, but he pulls up on Django in like the biggest, like, fine, I'll do it myself moment in like. The entire franchise and just gets absolutely negged. Like, what was he expecting? Uh, yeah, just a character we didn't really get the time to bond with, unfortunately. R.I.P. Common Trevor. R.I.P. Django. Um, I think it goes in meh again, to be honest. Again, he kind of has like a guy that's a lightsaber wielding like dude next to him and just does fine. I'll do it myself. Jumps down and gets negged. Yeah, we're going meh. Heavy. Great send-off. I just like scenes, like, self-sacrifice scenes are great. They're, they're incredible to me. I, lo I love self-sacrifice scenes. Seeing Heavy just throw down against a bunch of battle droids and then blow himself up. I think that's, I think that's incredible. I think that's a really, really interesting way to go out. It was one of the first major deaths of the Clone Wars, and it was just, it was a really good death as well, so. Yeah, great send-off. Nadar Verb. Boy. Um, I really did not like this character in this episode. I'm going to put it in just like, it's going to put it in that just happened, to be honest. Yeah. Um, he kind of got negged by Grievous, didn't he? Without really needing to fight him i mean obviously he had revenge it was showing the like, the jedi had fallen a bit but um nah i think this this death was just stupid it was a bit stupid and nadar i didn't really like him as a character so that's just and that just happened this guy the governor i've forgotten his name but i put him in there just to put him and couldn't care less because i absolutely hate him he annoyed me that entire episode so he can just go in there 99 great character send off like moments of self-sacrifice in the shows i don't know i just i just really like them previous was just he his death is just like honorable it's just a mandalorian death he dies on his own terms like that line like only the strongest shall rule like this guy just he was he was acceptive of it he knew he was gonna die he lived up to the bet that he made with maul that you know Whoever lost will die, and whoever won will rule Mandalore. And it was a great fight scene, and it led to an ultimately like brutal but sick death. You know, I think he goes bottom. He goes bottom because the other two are a bit more. Yeah, the other two I think are a bit more sad and more self-sacrifice. But this, he was that guy in this moment. I'm just saying. Savage Opress. He is the biggest fraud, isn't he? He's a sick character. He, it, to be honest, in the fight that it happens, I think I have to put it in all right. Because, like, the lawless, like, fight between Palpatine and, yeah. Palpatine Maul, Opress. 
what a what what a fight. That's one of the best fights in the Star Wars book. Savage just isn't that guy. I I don't know where to put this. Because now you know what? I think he goes and that just happened. Because he's this really powerful guy that Dooku trained. And then he just dies in such a pathetic way. I mean, obviously he dies to the most powerful Sith Lord, but... I don't know, it doesn't really offer anything. It doesn't really offer anything for Maul. It kind of just happens, and... Yeah, you know, you know what? No, I'm putting it in meh, above Sam Wessel and Shimmy, because... Shmi, because it's just... It's more impactful, like, as a scene. No, Shmi goes above. Shmi goes above. Oh no, it goes bottom because those two have some sort of ex like it expands the story. This just happens in a really cool fight. It's Five. a really stupid death. Oh boy. I this could be controversial. Nah, 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 nah. Not above Qui Gon. Not above Qui Gon for the story, but actually no, you know what? Sorry. This death, I I I will love this death till like the my deathbed this like he knew that order 66 was happening i felt bad for this guy watching season six of the clone was watching him just try to tell everyone no one listened because palpatine just had it all under wraps the whole time he was playing 3d chess with everyone on the board and fives was the only pawn on the board that had like strayed off and was his own color i don't know he's like brown on the board instead of white and black i don't know but he he was trying to tell everyone and ultimately he meets his demise and I was just sad. And then he gets name dropped again in season seven and it's just even sadder. So yeah, five's great send off. Really upsetting, but yeah, great. We already know where Fawn's going. If we're going self-sacrifice, this goes in great send off. It's another one. It's just a he, he is him moment. He balls out with a bunch of battle droids again in a fine i'll do it myself moment but like he actually somewhat succeeds that like, he mows them down for minutes but yeah no i i like i like these sort of deaths like these two have they're in this very similar category we don't get as much time with fawn we didn't get much time with heavy to be fair but heavies is better i'd say fawn goes at the bottom of this tier but yeah no this was a he is he is him moment this was a he is him moment Count Dooku. Hmm. This either goes in alright or great send-off. And I'm going to put it in alright. Because Count, we, we get time with Dooku in the films, but it, it just feels so like cheesy watching it, knowing that it was just planned for Dooku to die. Like, he was never supposed to win this fight with Anakin. He was supposed to just get offed and then Anakin was just going to descend into darkness after this. So it just feels a bit bad in a sense. But also it's good because the lightsaber duel that happens before it is incredible. The way the character dies is like by no means like bad or anything like this. It's just... It's just... Yeah, it, it just feels a bit more cheese knowing that Dooku probably could have been better he still wouldn't have beaten anakin but like i don't know it feels it feels weird knowing that anakin beat him but it was all part of the plan for dooku to die anyway so yeah i think it goes in all right grievous my glorious king and also one of the biggest frauds because he's uh, hyped up to be like this great warrior and every time he gets put in a situation where he has to hand-to-hand -hand combat someone he runs off so Drop my fucking controller. Ow. Ow, ow. <laughs> now we're, we're living, we're living. Every time he gets into hand-to-hand -hand combat with someone, he just... He runs away. But, you know what? It still goes in alright, because it's better than these. It's better than these. It's not better than Dooku. They do the character justice on his death. It's a shame we didn't get to see more of him, to be honest, in the prequels. But... His impact in the Clone Wars is impactful, and just put impact and impactful in the same line. No, I don't even know anymore. But yeah, no. Grievous, all right, definitely deserved better as a character to the to them just run away. But you know what? His death was good. His death was good. It did him justice. Right, these three. 
Oh boy, do I have beef with these three, except one of them. These two, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't care, right? You could have gone in, that just happened, right? You could have both gone in, that just happened. But because, right, Mace Windu pulls up to you, right? And he goes, right, lads, we're on a task here. We're going to pull up on this super evil motherfucker, right? And we are going to, like, we're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. We're not going to perish, we're not going to falter. It's this, like, super weird, like, spin mid-air. I don't care if it's supposed to stun them, like, Windu and Kit Fisto react. These two just stand there. Specialists have been doing it. They've been at war for a long time. And they get absolutely mogged by Sidious. They get absolutely mogged by him in seconds. I don't know, that just really annoys me. But Kit Fisto can go and, like, that just happened because he lives for like a second and doesn't just get like shat on but yeah mace windu um this can go in this can go in all right as well it can go above grievous because i think he does really well i think the whole scene with him and sidious is really good and i think it really sets up the story obviously because without it all the 66 doesn't go in motion so um yeah he can go in all right the scene is very cool beforehand. Um, his death is just really unfortunate, really. That Anakin just pulls up and kills him, pretty much. Like, without Anakin being there, like, the war ends and, like, none of the original trilogy ever happens. But, yeah. That goes in alright because it has a huge impact later on in the story. So, that's big. Kia di Mundi. Why do I even put this? Because in terms of Order 66, this is like, the, the other two, the other two are somewhat interesting. I'm going to put this one in that just happened, but above the other two in it. And Kit Fisto can go above Nadar because, I don't know, these two, this death is just like, he turns around, gets shot at a few times and dies. Like, I don't know, other than like the woman that gets like blown off of her speeder bike, like this is the most... Un... It, it, it's just not a death that I care about, really. It just happens. And also, like, Kiadi Mundi's, like, slightly annoying. Like, in the Clone Wars at times. And it's like... I don't I don't know why, but in the Clone Wars, he's known Ahsoka for a long time. But he starts, like, chatting absolute shit about her. And, like, the Jedi who... To catch a Jedi... I've forgotten the arc, but... The arc where Ahsoka gets framed, this guy is the first to hop on, like, the train of, like, oh, yeah, no, Ahsoka's, like, in the wrong here. Like, she's a criminal, she's convicted, she needs to go. Shut up, man. Like, you're, you're, you're definitely in that just happened because of this. Like, if, you, if that didn't happen, like, you can go bottom of there. But because of your annoyance and, like, what about the attack on the Wookiees? That just happened. Fuck you. Alaya Sakura. I've seen this thing, um, where... Well, I, knew this cause, I know this because of Jedward, actually. <laughs> Subscribe to him. But, um... I know this because I watch his tier list video of this as well. And, um... She, she has so much faith in the clones... That when she... When she's looking forward... And she hears the guns, pro like, cock up, like... She's... She still continues looking forward to think that they're shooting at an enemy. And then she, like, puts her hands up in surrender, realizing there's no enemy there and gets shot to death. It just shows the faith she had in the clones, and I think it's similar to Plo Kloon, who's next as well. Like, some of the Jedi really did view clones as just not just soldiers, and I think that's why she goes a, a, above that just happening to Mare. Because, again, it's no long-lasting impact, but, like... Yeah, I can't go. It's no long-lasting impact, but the scene is just really good. Because, again, like I say, it, it just shows that... Not every Jedi viewed the clone as soldiers like Pong Krell. So, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Plo Kloon, um, he can go, he can go like top of meh. Because in the Clone Wars, we really see a lot more of him. And we get to see his bond with Ahsoka. We get to see him just as a character in action in points. We get to see his views on the clones that, you know... They're not just expendable to him. And I think that just makes his death in this film 
even more powerful, very similar to Elias Sakura, you know, just being like a character that thought the clones were more than just soldiers and then them being the very thing that offed him eventually would, I think is very good symbolism and there's what people would say poetry that Star Wars is. Padme. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Like, I can't justify this. I... I actually can't justify this death being anything above meh, because she does not need to die. Like, she dies for the point of view of she's not in the original trilogy. I think that's it. She does not die. Like, she does not need to. At all. She... She dies because... Oh, I can't be bothered to live anymore. <laughs> she's lost the will to live. Like, how? Explain this. Explain this. This is like... This death feels like it was written by Disney. This feels like it's a sequel death. I hate to say it, but no. Padme's character, I think, across the prequels was okay. The romance between her and Anakin was not okay for the most part. But you know what? I really don't think this death is that important at all. But it's important, obviously. Sorry. It's very important for the story. Story importance, because obviously, like, Luke and Leia then going into adoption is, like, all right. It's a great send-off in a different respect, but like I can't I can't justify putting it above that just happened. You know, I'll put it above like Kiadi Mundi. But like I can't justify paying it more than this because she just doesn't need to die. Alright. Saw Guerrero. And only because of the fact that he kills another character, which we'll get to later. I think it's meh. I think it's a really cool death. It's just the power of the Death Star. It expands the doesn't it expands the story ever so slightly for Rogue One. Uh, I'll put it below Elias Sakura. Uh, we put Cassian Andor and Jyn Erso in the same bit here. That death on the beach is like, um, yeah, it definitely goes in all right or great send off. I think it goes. I think it goes in great send off. But let me just put like Baze Malbus in here as well as well as Chira Inwi because both of these as well. Base Malbus is self-sacrifice. Another one of them, so he goes above the rest <laughs> automatically here. Base Malbus can go behind those, but Base Malbus and then we all of them are self-sacrifice in a sense, actually. Well, you know, all of them are self-sacrifice in a sense. I think Base Malbus is like the coolest, like I'm a throw down with like the Death Troopers moment, and then get like absolutely like negged. But he doesn't actually, actually, in fairness, it is a sort of. I'm a throw down moment, but he he kind of doesn't lose. <laughs> he kind of just accepts his fate. So you know what? I give Baze Malbus. Yeah, I give, I think Baze Malbus is actually nah, it's still the worst of these because I think the other nah. You know what? I won't rank these. I can't rank these. These all of these. I love every death in Rogue One. I love every single one. So I can't rank these. Chira Imwe, um, I love Chira Imwe, he does produce, he is really funny, <laughs> he produces one of the best jokes in the, in the franchise. Jato. Are you kidding me? I'm blind! Chira, I think his death is, it's just great, I, I can't tell if it's luck or whether it's force manifestation at this point, <laughs> but like, the way he just walks out, switches on the lever, and then... They are able to communicate with, like, the world up, like, yeah. The ships above, sorry. It's really good. Um, yeah, no, Chirrut Inwe was just a go-to the character. He got a it was a really good end to his character, and, um... Yeah, I, I love I love the Chirrut Inwe death. It's really sad as well, seeing Baze, you know, cry over Chirrut. But also, Baze then comes to the acceptance of the Force... For his death and also comes to the acceptance of he's gonna die and he'll join Ch Chira like so you know what Baze Malbus, Chira Imwe and Jyn Erso and Cassian Andor both get character deaths I think that synergize off of the two characters really well because these two the, the first two you know they just had the really I think really good bond throughout the movie as friendship and then obviously die together and then the other two I think I think it's a bit of symbolism I think the way that Baze was so disjointed from Chirrut's belief in the Force, 
was for the respect of like he died away from Chira, I think. Away from Chira because he wasn't on the same page as Chira in terms of belief. That's a very deep way of looking at it. Uh, this guy, I've forgotten his name. Uh, his death was like the lamest of the Rogue One deaths. He kind of just gets like a grenade chucked into the ship and he kind of can't react and just dies. I like the character. I kind of like the development he gets. The death just raises the stakes, but overall, he, it doesn't actually really contribute that much. K2 goes in this tier as well, also. Like, they, again, self sacrifice, but like, it, it's a. I like this one, especially because K2SO in this film, we don't ever really see him use a blaster, I don't think, to this point. But then, like, he's cracking jokes for the whole film, you know, he's not a really serious character. And then he starts going down on Stormtrooper after Stormtrooper after Stormtrooper, mowing them down. And then, unfortunately, just meets his demise after being shot. But K2's missing, like, reason for dying is so important for Jin and Cassian to succeed. So, K2, I love it. Definitely a good death. Great send-off. Krennic. I didn't like Krennic that much. I liked him as a villain. Obviously, you were supposed to dislike him. You were... I put it in meh again. Um, I put it on here just to say, like, this guy got shot by the Death Star. Like, can we just put that into the context? I don't think anyone's really been... I think people have been sleeping on this. This guy got shot by a full beam of the big moon. The big green beam was what offed this guy. The planet-killing beam is what offed this guy. Direct. That's unreal. That's unfathomable as to, like, what that would have done to him. We just absolutely annihilated him. It's gruesome to think of, like, but that, that is definitely, it's, it's bottom of this tier because it has no impact on anything. Then actually, no, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to put it high on this because I really like the symbolism that this shows. His own creation, the thing that he wanted to get recognized for, the thing he bragged about, was the very thing that destroyed him. I like that. You know what? That can go in meh. That can go like near top of meh. Not into all right, but it can go to top of meh. I really like that. I really like that about this death. Uh, tech. So, yeah, this is a death I was talking about that like Saw Gerrera just played a heavy part in. Um, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I, I don't know why they killed him. I really don't. Looking at the Bad Batch Season 3... They're obviously struggling without him, but as like a story point, as of now, when I'm recording, the next episode hasn't come out yet. When this comes out, it would have come out. So there might be a new character death to add to this list. I don't know. But um, as of now, there is no real story implications on season three as to tech being gone. He could be that trooper. I don't think he is. I don't think that trooper is going to turn out to be anyone. I'm sorry to say it. I think tech is in that just happened. It's it, it's it's somewhat like emotional because they really do play on the heartstrings of everyone a bit by bonding us with this character for like the season. But I really think it was just forced for the sake of it happening, in my opinion, or it felt like it at least. You know what? I'll put it. I'll put it in meh. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and put it in meh. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as those in that in that tier. Rio. Um, I don't remember the guy's name next to him. I think it's Beckett. Um, yeah, free my boy Rio, man. He wanted to open a cantina on, like, a, a hot tropical country. I've watched Solo again recently, so that's why I know this. It, it's not a couldn't care less. It kind of is. Yeah, nice. it, it is a couldn't care less. Like, it, it just happens, doesn't it? He gets shot. That entire sort of, like, bounty party gets, like, killed by, was it the Pikes? Was it? Crimson Dawn, I've forgotten. <laughs> that solo is just such like such an unmemorable movie. But um yeah, no. This character doesn't really he offers, you know, he offers his life. He offers he wants to go on and become something more. He wants to open a cantina business. He's not about this life. Beckett. Oh, I hate this guy. This guy yaps. This guy's death was from yapping. Like this is death by yapping. This guy was really like 
Well, I'm about to tell you one final important lesson. He just gets shot. He just dies. I hope you're still paying attention because now I'm going to tell you the most important. <laughs> Do me a favor, shut the fuck up. And it's Han Solo really just goes Pew! and kills him because he's yapping. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't care less about this character. Absolutely, I, you know what? He can go bottom. He's actually he's actually worse than the chairman. He's actually worse than the chairman. I really did not like this character throughout the whole film. Was he a good mentor for Han? Somewhat. I just didn't like the character. I thought he just yapped. I'm yapping now. Kanan. A uh, great send off. Self sacrifice. Uh, it can go above all of the Rogue One characters. It can go above Pre Vizsla. It can go above. Yeah, it can go there. That's justified. I. It can go. It can even go above heavy. I really like Kane and Jarvis's death. I don't really like Rebels that much as a whole, to be honest, as a show. I don't really enjoy watching it. I have watched every season. Um, yeah, this death is really good. I really like the way he's just like in between, you know, holding back. He's saving those he wants to obviously keep safe. And holding back the fire. And yeah, no, his whole vision coming back thing as well. Like, I didn't really understand that, but it was kind of cool. And then, yeah, getting engulfed by the flames. It was just... It was just wow. Like, it was it was a wow. It was definitely... It was a heart terror at the time, watching that. That was... It was great. It was great. Darth Maul. Hmm. We've got so many in great send-offs. <laughs> Because I love all of these. Darth Maul does get a great send-off. I must admit. In all honesty, he does get a great send-off. I was thinking of putting him in top of all right. But no, he does get a great send-off. Because he spends all of his time. All of his time. Trying to track down Obi-Wan. And all of his hatred for years on Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan uses the stance that Qui-Gon used. And then goes into his own stance. Into a more offensive was it defensive? I've forgotten. I've forgotten which way around it was. It was great symbolism because Maul thought he was going to strike down Obi-Wan like he did Qui-Gon. He didn't. Maul got struck down. Maul dies and then starts being Obi-Wan's homeboy. Like, for no reason. He's like, he will avenge us. But no, he, I, I really like Maul's death. I think it's a really cool, like, full character circle thing because he goes from he goes from Sith Lord, he goes to Crime Lord, he goes to homeless man desert wanderer then dead like what more can you ask for uh gregor um whereas maul and kanan and like rebels felt like you know really well done and justified deaths gregor felt like they killed him because it was the season finale and I, no one died really that, that's what it felt like. I'm going to put it in that just happened because I like Gregor and I really would have rather it. I mean, he's cool in the Bad Batch, but I really would have rather it. He just died in like the... Was it Coaxium? I don't think it was Coaxium. I think that's Solo. Rhydonium, Rhydonium in um, that planet in the Clone Wars. That would have been just far better, but they brought him back. I haven't got any gripes with bringing him back. Um... But killing him off again just felt very forced and, to be honest, not very needed. Uh, Greedo. Does anyone really care? Like, the only it's an iconic scene because, like, who shot first? But, like, does anyone really care? Not not particularly. I mean, I'm putting him, like, above Nadar Verb and stuff. But, like, he doesn't really offer anything. Obi-Wan, then, uh, yeah. Just, like, story purposes, again, like, it goes above Kanan, because he just, it really brings in Luke's character. To, like, Starts Luke's journey by Obi-Wan dying, because Obi-Wan lets him get away, and then Luke can come back and destroy the Death Star. So, you know what? I think this is a great death. Really good at, you know, just expanding Luke's character and developing him in later films. But it's also really just, the way he dies, I think, is very sloppy, but I'm not going to hold that against him because the film is very old. But Jabba, um, he doesn't even fit in the image. <laughs> uh, Jabba, um, yeah, kind of just, that just happened, really. Like, he's this dangerous guy that gets choked to death by his slave. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Yoda. Um, again, I think this goes with Obi-Wan. I, I don't... 
Uh, I think it goes below Obi Wan because Obi Wan offers a lot more. I think. Nah, I think you know what? No, it doesn't go above. It doesn't go below. They even I think because they both offer a lot to Luke Skywalker's character in the original trilogy, and they both develop him enough. But overall, I think it just moves him even further on. He develops him even further than Obi Wan did, and his death is just that important. Uh, Vader. I mean, it goes without saying again, like, you've got to put it, like, in the top of here. You know what? No, you've got to put it above Qui-Gon, because Qui-Gon starts the prophecy. Like, this is where it starts, this is where it ends. I don't care about, like, Ben Solo here, like, doing something else that, like, contributes to it. This is just that much more important, because it just, it, to me, this is where the, tr this is where the saga ends. This is where... This is where the Chosen One prophecy is fulfilled. Everything's in balance. That is the way it should have been left. Or they shouldn't have touched on that again. Because this death is just so important. It's so impactful. It definitely was an emotional death as well. But, um, yeah, no. This, for Luke, it was important. This is just also, like, the redemption of the villain. Good. Palpatine. Um, I think this goes in all right. To be honest, I think just because there's so many in here now, I think I need to be a bit more conservative of what I put in here. The way he dies is, yeah, it's it's good, it's good. And the way Vader kills him again, it brings around the prophecy of the the chosen one. It's, it's again hugely impactful. I just don't really think the way he dies when you look at all of these. I mean, look, these two are massively impactful. Because obviously character development. This is impactful for character development. You know what? No, it does have to go in here. If these two are in here. While it is not the coolest death, neither are these. So you know what? No. He go he he also has to come in this tier. Uh, I think this guy's name is Kui. Um That just happened. Like he kind of just dies off screen, doesn't he? Like uh he's yeah, yeah it, it happens. Like I have spoken. Like that just happens. Moff Gideon, um, yeah, um, sorry guys, no, Moff Gideon, uh, yeah, when he was in his Gustavo Fring phase, when he was actually cooking, when he was cooking that Los Poyos Hermanos chicken, he was, like, incredible, he was an incredible villain in the first two seasons of The Mandalorian, we get to season three, why is he even here, like, we could have moved on, we could have done something different, he pulls up, he does near enough nothing, and dies. In the most pathetic way as well. He is burnt. He gets burnt. And he's wearing best guard. And he gets burnt. I'm sorry. I don't like this death. But you know what? What the Mandalorian did do really well in this season? Tarvis of his death. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put it. In great send off. Because we've got so many in here now. <laughs> to be honest. We've got so many. No. I'm playing great send off. I'm going to put it bottom up. I just, like, the character itself just really isn't that important. But, like I say, deaths where the character, like, Heavy, Fawn, Pre Vizsla, K2, all of the Rogue One characters in here, that just, like, contributes somewhat to the story. Because this does contribute to them winning. Because it lets them get away. But he throws down with, like, was it four or five Praetorian Guards? Like, these were really cool as well. And he does hold his own. Until they pull out the swords. Like, and then he get, does get fucked. But like... He... Yeah, no. I loved this. It, again, his character... It, it really wasn't, like, that important. He really wasn't that much of, like, an emotional send-off. But I really did like the fact that he went from... He helped Mando. Then he went to hating Mando in the book of Boba Fett. Then he helped him again, and then he rescued him. Well, helped rescue him and died in the process. So, you know what? I like this death. This death is very good. Unlike the next one. Um, yeah. I really did not like the fact they killed him. And it's just not very necessary for, like, Kylo Ren's character. Like, I don't care what anyone says. There is no way. I mean, Harrison Ford obviously... Well, he, he doesn't like Star Wars, so obviously he wanted to die, I'd imagine. Um, but the fact they killed him in this way 
really does not contribute to Kylo Ren's character because he it doesn't show that he's dark. Oh, dark and edgy. He killed his dad. Okay. Okay, man. Like, he just deserved better. He just deserved better than to walk onto, like, a bridge and get impaled by a lightsaber while trying to help his son. He just deserved better than that. Like, the legend that is the character just deserved better than that. So, I don't know. I really don't like it, personally. Phasma. Um, the scene was very cool in which, you know, this fight took place. It was... Actually, no, Scratch. It wasn't very cool in which this scene took place. This... This scene, they tried to make it cool. And it kind of was, I think. But this character's just so meaningless. Like, it, it really didn't contribute anything. Like, let's get Finn to fight his ex-commander. Because it would be really cool to show that he's left the Empire fully. Let's do that. And then that happens. And then she dies. She falls into space. Finn absolutely destroys her. Cool, live with it. Like I couldn't I could live without this character. I really could. Snoke. This one this one in the theater, to be honest, it really broke me because I remember when The Force Awakens came out, I came home and I watched Star Wars Star Wars theories. I think it was his first ever video as well, watching like how Snoke could be Palpatine. I think that was it. I don't remember because it's all the way back in twenty fifteen when I was nine. But um watching watching that and thinking, Oh, there's so many windows for them to go with Snoke. And I was th I was kind of hoping he was Palpatine. But it was a bit. It would have been cooler if it was. But not in the way that they did it in Rise of Skywalker. But I I was really like wanting him to be like. I don't know. It didn't make sense for him to be Mace Windu. It would have been really cool for him to be Mace Windu. But it didn't make sense. But like the, all of the theories around Snoke. Just had me really excited for The Last Jedi. Because. We were actually going to see this character like, in the flesh and not as this big hologram guy. Like, we, I was hyped. I was hyped, to say the least. And then he got impaled. And then just got offed as a clone in the next movie. And all of his importance just disappeared. So, um... Sorry, Snoke, you also go and that just happened. And probably down in the bottom of it as well, because... We really just... It, I think it really just ruined the direction that J.J. Abrams was going with this story... And, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was it was a bit pathetic, I thought, that they killed their main villain. He goes above these, I think, but I don't know. He just never really got a chance to show himself as anything more important than he actually was and then got identified as just a clone, which is just boring. Holdo. Yeah, uh, let's move on. I hate this character. I was sat in the theatre... And I was looking at the screen wanting to punch her, man. Like, I'm, this isn't even, like, an understatement. Like, I was sat in the theatre, 2018, Last Jedi, I think. I was sat in the theatre, and I was waiting for this movie to just... I was waiting for something to happen to this character, because, I, quite frankly, I think she, other than Jar Jar Binks, might be, single-handedly, one of the most annoying characters in this franchise. Because the first thing is, like, okay, she takes over from Leia, right? Okay, that was that was fine. When that first happened, I was like, okay, Leia's injured. This can happen. This can happen. It can. We can move. Then she fails to tell everyone her grand scheme to save them, which then gets like Poe sending Finn and Rose to Canto by it, which is bullshit because that little is nothing. Then they go onto the ship for no reason. Poe causes mutiny for no reason. We just get all of this stuff that just could have been avoided if she just went. Yeah, no, I'm gonna fly the ship into the ship. That could have happened. That was just that was all she needed to say. But I think I don't know. I don't, I really at this point don't know what they were going for with this movie anymore. I can't tell you. I could watch this movie as a blind person, and I could tell you that this movie is still garbage just from dialogue, just from hearing dialogue. I could tell you that this movie is rubbish because there's no direction in this movie. It's just them in space, them then leaving space to go to a gambling planet. Them then leaving the gambling planet to go to, like, Crate. Them fighting on Crate. A pathetic lightsaber fight. Rey then being outed as the last Jedi. Which, by the way, she, like, trained against a rock for, like, five minutes of the movie and then has deemed that. And then them leaving. And then, oh, Rey has the Jedi books that got burnt by Yoda, so that scene's also useless. Like, the last Jedi, 
that I honestly I could make like a four hour video on why I don't like that film. It's still not worse than of Skywalker. Though, I'm just saying, but that movie's garbage. Uh, Leia, you know what? They did Leia justice. They did Leia all right, I think, and she can go top of all right because she was just yeah. She died. No, obviously, Carrie Fisher died after they filmed Episode Eight, so there wasn't really much they could do with the character by this point. And they did use her in some scenes in Episode Nine, which, to be honest, I really liked. I really liked that they didn't just kill her. But what I also really liked was that her death wasn't just like at the start of the movie. It was like late in the movie, and it happened while. Kylo was fighting Rey, and also, like, that scene was terrible, by the way. Um, but it happened in that scene, and I think the fact, like, the empowerment of that, and then Kylo kind of shifting into Ben Solo was good. I thought, I thought the death, they made the death contribute to the story, and they ended Leia's character really well instead of doing her dirty like they did the next person. But... Yeah, no. I like that it contributed. I like that it contributed a lot in a garbage movie. You know what? Leia Organa. Fair play. Really well done. Really well done with Leia Organa. Luke. Um It can go meh. I can't like, I can't bring myself to put it anywhere below meh because Luke Skywalker's character is just legendary. But um What were they doing? What 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 were they doing when they were when they were writing episode eight Luke? This sad, decrepit man. Like what I I don't un I really don't understand what they were playing at when they decided to just, just write this character and the direction they went with Luke. And then I think even worse, I think him going as a force projection to fight Kylo. Instead of facing him, when he said he made a mistake by not confronting him originally, then acting like even more of a pussy by not going to face him, just makes the message of like his whole character in this movie just redundant. I I I don't get it. Like it, uh, it was just so lame. Like the cinematography of this scene is gorgeous, by the way. I must admit, and that like, him dying to the sun, the two sons where he also like started his journey really symbolic but the death is shit they could have done this any cooler i'm sorry i'm really sorry if anyone does like this but they could have done this any cooler and i can rant about this for hours they could have done this any cooler let's move on i can't i can't palpatine somehow palpatine returned um i i don't know <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Rise of Skywalker. Right, we can we can do this now. We can do this really easily. We can do this really easily now. We'd put them both right there. I'm not going to reorganize the list anymore because, quite frankly, I've been recording now for 53 minutes. <laughs> and rearranging the order again just wouldn't make sense at this stage. But we'll start with Palpatine. Palpatine, just in the Rise of Skywalker in general, first off makes... No real sense coming back. That's the first thing. The second thing is that, like, his death, while it is a cool scene, and I do like it a lot. I like the voices. I like the acknowledgement of, like, the other films that we really have not got in this, like, sequel trilogy. I really do like that. But his death is just so... He comes to full power. For like five minutes, he like negs the resistance by like shooting a massive beam of lightning into the air, and then Ray just pulls up. Yeah, no, I really like the way they did his character dirty. <laughs> I like the way they did it because it's just almost funny. It's so like implorably bad to the point where I just felt like this movie was supposed to just be a satire, like. It's terrible. It's honestly, it's honestly shocking that they made this character end like this. And yeah, and then Ben Solo. I don't really know what to say about this because it, oh, it's just, it's just classic Disney. It's just cheese. Like Ray dies, then Ben Solo heals Ray, 
and then like Ray wakes up, they kiss, and then Ben Solo dies. Did this need to happen? No, I think it would have been a better fitting end to have Ray die. Why is that? First off, I don't like Ray. Second off, it would have been a right sacrifice. Third, I don't like Ray, and we would have never have got um, Ray Skywalker. And the prophecy would have somewhat been refulfilled again because a Skywalker would have kind of brought balance because Ben went from the dark to the light. But no, we kill him because we can. Anyway, guys, that, that that's the list. Um, let me know if you agree in the comments. Um, yeah, if you want to see me review all of the films, you know what? 10 likes on the video. 10 likes on the video. I'll review all nine of the films. Um, you know what? No, we'll do spin-offs as well. I'll review all of the media. I'll review all of the Star Wars media. Um, 10 likes on the video. We'll do that. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.